Hello, I'm, I'm Fred. Been involved in conservation for, for about the past 10 or 15 years. And uh, my main interest is in uh, wildflower meadows. Now, a particular problem in the UK is with the following the Second World War, most of the grassland was altered to what is classed as improved grassland, i.e. To, uh, to enhance the uh, the yield of uh, perennial ryegrass. So, following the war, um, a new strain of uh, perennial ryegrass was introduced, which was effectively a hybrid of uh, Italian ryegrass, Spanish ryegrass, Mexican ryegrass, and American ryegrass, which uh, provides an astronomical yield of, uh, of grass under any conditions. Now, to revert that back to traditional grassland by anything other than chemical means is almost impossible. Repeated cutting has no effect on it, but what I've been trying for, for the past 10 years is, uh, is the use of parasitic plants to, um, to bring ryegrass under control. But a beautiful example of that is, uh, is yellow rattle. It's a, a hemiparasitic plant and the only species it feeds on is uh, perennial ryegrass. So instead of grass, uh, which uh, left its own devices, will be about shoulder height, the uh, yellow rattle that doesn't go through the uh, photosynthesis procedure, very small leaves, doesn't, doesn't need big leaves, it just taps straight into the, uh, into the roots of perennial ryegrass. So instead of growing to this height, Within uh, two or three years, it will take it right down to about this height. After the introduction of the yellow rattle, things like orchids, and that will, um, will sort of colonise the area naturally. Yellow rattle prefers alkaline soil. Now, another species I've tried is red barnsia. It's a similar sort of plant, but uh, it has a reddish flower. Now, uh, that one prefers acid soil. It will take on alkaline soils, but uh, doesn't particularly flourish. In terms of introducing yellow rattle to, to an area of grassland, I think the key feature is to ignore all the published information on it, which is wrong. As with all, almost all, all seed, they re require uh, sort of several key, key elements to uh, facilitate germination. So, crucial thing with yellow rattle, it must be subjected to a period of frost. Unlike a lot of the uh, published information, which is wrong, on no account scarify the ground uh, before sowing. It will not take on bare soil. So, uh, so the secret to sow sowing it is to, first of all, Cut the grass uh, fairly short. Clear away all the all the risings. Now the absolutely crucial thing is sowing time. All the published information says sow in autumn, which is wrong. Uh, must be sown prior, well prior to autumn. Ideally about uh, August the twelfth, which was old uh, old Lammas Day. Not the new Lammas Day, which is actually a little bit too late, but the old Lammas Day, August 12th, is a perfect time for sowing. Then it must be sowed into established grassland. No bare soil, no raking, harrowing, just uh, sowed straight into the grassland. And the actual rate from uh, experimenting, I found that the best sort of uh, sowing rate was about 0.2 grams per square metre, which worked out about five, five seeds per square foot. So a, cr a crucial thing with it in the early years is not to walk on the uh, on a med medal too much after the last week in February. Last week in February the seed begins to germinate and any trampling on, on the medal then would, uh, would, would kill off the uh, kill off the new seedlings.
The other uh, crucial thing then is the annual maintenance. After two or three years, the ratio will, will reduce about uh, about 30% of what it once once was. Um, but the crucial thing is actual mowing times. Uh, with the introduction of a yellow rattle, you'll find the meadows would only be cutting once per year. So then the, the crucial thing is the seeding time, which is um, seed sets uh, generally around the um, end of July, beginning of August. So provided it's cut after that, uh, after that time, sometime late August, September, or any time right the way through to, uh, to mid-February. The main cru crucial thing is that uh, it must, must be sown into established grassland. It must be subjected to a period of frost. On the sowing date of around about the uh, 12th of August is absolutely critical. Any delay beyond the 12th of August, and the, uh, the, the, the seed hunt well, has a short viability. And then, um, my own opinion is it's something to do with the wavelength of blue light. That By the end of July, and up to late August, the yellow rattle seeds can be gathered from an already established wildflower meadow. It is important, however, that you have permission from the landowner to carry out any removal of the seeds. One of the old methods that we used for collecting yellow rattle seeds was to shake the seeds into a cup. This, however, proved a time-intensive activity with a low yield and issues arising such as covering the same plant as a former gatherer. Thanks to Fred's input, we have changed our gathering method. We now simply grasp the stem between our fingers and gather all the brownish coloured pods into a bucket for later filtering. This not only results in a significantly quicker collection time, it also removes unnecessary duplication of work. Should you gain permission from a landowner for the removal of yellow wrestle seeds, it is important to remember a few tips for gathering the seeds. The first one is to be aware of public access and how frequently the site is used. An undisturbed meadow will result in a greater yield due to the yellow rattle seeds still remaining in the pods. An area protected from the wind will also contain a greater yield than in that of a open meadow. Although this may seem obvious, it can easily be overlooked. The final point in gathering the seeds is not to be concerned with stripping bare the yellow rattle meadow. As you remove the pods, you will also be unintentionally shaking the yellow rattle free from the other pods on the plant while the stamping the shaken seeds into the ground. We have found that gathering the yellow rattle using the new method can result in quite a substantial yield. The pods are then spread out on newspaper and left out for two days to dry. When the seeds are dry and ready to be filtered, you will need to obtain three buckets and a steel mesh bin with holes of a similar diameter of 5.25mm. A lid for this filter bin will also be needed. Newspapers will be required to be spread out around your work zone to catch any stray yellow rattle seeds. Fill the filter bin to a third full with yellow rattle pods. Place the lid on the filter bin, hold over a second bucket and shake the filter bin vigorously until no more seeds fall out and then finally empty the used pods into a third bucket. Repeat this process until you have a bucket full of yellow rattle seeds and empty pods. Don't make the mistake of throwing away the empty pods as these can be scattered back into the yellow rattle field or potential area that we'd like to establish. Now we've reached the final stage, sowing the yellow rattle seed into an established grassland. As with gathering the seed, you also need permission from the landowner if your intent is to sow the seeds. Asking volunteers to stand shoulder to shoulder walking a straight line across the field while scattering the yellow rattle will result in the most efficient cover. The final part, and by far the most crucial, is to make sure that you stomp the seeds into the ground. 